on. It's Wednesday, 4 o'clock, your favorite time of the week because it's Hawaii, the state of clean energy. We are sponsored by the Hawaii Energy Policy Forum. It was also funded by h and &E Had to get a plug in for my mother uh, company. And uh, the Policy Forum, as the name implies, we look for good and for bad policy. We look for good policies to do good. And we try to identify policies which might not be so good and offer our comments on them. So today we have a great show. Uh, we have Larry Pearl from Utility Dive Magazine. And we also have Peter Rosig from HECO. And we're here to talk about uh, some really good news for HECO and for Hawaii. Uh, HECO has won the Utility of the Year Award. Uh, and we're here to talk about it with Peter and with Larry. So first of all, Peter, why don't you start off? Okay, um, you know, we got an email a week or so ago out of the blue and it said, you've uh, been named Utility of the Year by Utility Dive. The Utility Dive, uh, Larry could tell us more about it, but it's a very highly respected online, independent journalistic publication that uh, covers the utility industry across the board. And uh, we certainly had our share of write-ups in there because we're, uh, as you know, we're kind of on the cutting edge of a lot of stuff. but. Uh, this, there's some awards that you nominate yourself, and there's some right. awards that you beg your friends to nominate right. you, and there are uh, some awards that if you make a large enough donation to the uh, organization, boom, boom, you get an award. <laughs> yeah, right. But this is completely an independent award. It came out of the blue, as I said, and, yeah. and it's very gratifying for that reason to be recognized. Yeah. Um, as sometimes happens here in Hawaii, we're better known and somewhat better respected out of the state than we are in the state. Uh, here, uh, you know, we get our share of, of knocks occasionally. But um, so this is a great, great honor for us. And I think it reflects, we can talk in more detail about what sure. it reflects, but we are on the edge of, of the clean energy future, of electrification of transportation, right. of, of uh, grid improvement, modernization. Uh, and um, it's good to be Get a pat on the back for that occasionally. Right. Yeah, that's great. So, Larry, welcome to the show. And uh, how about telling us a little bit about this Dive magazine? Because I was thrown aback by the by the name. So, tell us about Utility Dive. I hear it's like a significant uh, publication for the utility industry. Sure. Well, thanks for having me. And we're an online publication that covers the utility sector, and our overall theme is covering the energy transition how as a whole is transitioning from the old centralized generation with dominated by fossil fuels, coal. So Utility Dive, um, we're daily. We also have uh, three weeklies on energy storage and renewables and what we call load management. Um, and we every year we uh, select uh, a number of awards, uh, company of the year, project of the year, um, executive of the year, um, and as Peter mentioned, we cover Hawaii Electric a lot because they're doing a lot. And so, you know, Hawaii Electric came up in the conversation fairly early. It starts with an editorial discussion. And then basically what we do, we reach out to people in the sector, to experts, consultants, analysts, and so forth. And because we want to get, uh, I guess, validation uh, for our choice. And we reached out to a number of people. and. Basically, they validated what we had said, that Hawaiian Electric is at the forefront of a lot of these changes that the industry is going through. So it really is hitting on a lot of the major trends are driving the transformation of the sector. And so that's why we want to recognize uh, what they're doing with, with this award. That's great. So... So what are you know what are the outstanding? I mean, I know they're doing a lot in just about every in all sectors, not just about every single sector. But what are the kind of the top level, really exciting areas that you think uh, that they really shine uh, for the overall uh, the overall industry? That's kind of showing the, them the way and you know learning by our challenges and our solutions. So what what are the one two one or two or three top level things? Sure, I guess a couple of things. And the, the first one is um, driven by Hawaii's mandate to get to 100% renewable energy by 2045. They've had some large procurements. Uh, uh, they had one for 
uh, 930 megawatts of solar equivalent uh, paired with some storage uh, in the past year, and, and they're going to be moving on to other procurements as they increase the amount of renewables on their system. So really, you know, closing uh, fossil fuel, coal, and, and, and other facilities, oil-fired facilities. The other aspect, which I would say, which, which kind of goes hand in hand with the renewable part is, you know, Hawaii, I believe, has, and, and Peter, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe there's per capita uh, rooftop solar um, coverage uh, in the country. And, you know, you want to leverage those assets to help the grid. You want to be able to integrate those to assist the grid, uh, for example, if, if demand uh, spikes or something like, like that happens. So they're working with Sunrun and working with other companies to really take all these assets, these individual assets, and help the overall grid uh, to function better and, and more efficiently. But I would say the renewable part of it and the integrating these, these distributed assets, these assets that are in people's homes on their rooftops. I, I appreciate that, Larry. And, and uh, just to follow up a little bit, uh, statewide on, in our service territory, 19% of single family homes have rooftop solar. Uh, here on Oahu, where uh, the greatest percentage of people live, uh, something like 33%, roughly a third of all the single family homes have rooftop solar. And then there's uh, more on businesses and uh, big box stores and, uh, and that sort of thing. So I think it's safe to say that we're far and away ahead of, uh, of, of any other utility in the country on a per capita or percentage basis. And eight or 10 years ago when this boom started, uh, you know, our challenge was simply to integrate that kind of uh, power, you know, a, a diverse power plant across the island that our system operators could not even see. Or we don't know what's going to be coming in the, to the system from those. And, and we have evolved now to the point, as Larry suggested, where we're looking at ways, not just that they don't hurt the grid, but that they actually help the grid, that people who have storage uh, can uh, work with us as participants. And uh, eventually, we'd like to see almost three times the amount right. of rooftop solar that we have today. And more and more of those people, uh, not just taking care of their own energy needs, which is fine, but contributing to our ability to deliver power, right. quality power, reliable power to everybody. And, and that's really the transition that's kind of somewhat gone unnoticed over, because it happened slowly. Yeah, right. We got from the, we went from wait a minute we can't take this much solar on our grids because it's a it's a 20th century grid and we're in the 21st century now we're beginning it's just the beginning but we're moving into a period where we're saying okay we're going to take more and more and we're going to find ways to take it so that it supports what we do not not undermines it. Larry, um, how do you leverage this kind of a uh, situation that we have here in Hawaii with your readership? I mean, do you come up with feature stories that, was, for example, would feature Hawaiian Electric and tell them, uh, you know, a story on what they do? Or do they submit stories to you? Just, you're a reporter. So how do you come up with your stories sure. and what kind of stories are you writing? So we have a combination of what we call daily news stories. Those are, you know, company announcements, uh, new rules that are proposed by other states or federal regulators. Um, you know, if Congress passes the energy bill, we'll cover that. So those are kind of straight news. Uh, we're going to cover also the, the, the good stuff and, and the bad stuff. Um, you know, we, we, you know, don't shy away from covering news that is not all positive. But, you know, most of the stuff we cover is rules out or uh, announcement that came out from companies. So that's the sort of the news part, but we also do what we call features. And the, uh, our, our, our chance to go more in depth into the trends that are uh, happening, uh, whether it's the rise of electric vehicles or uh, integrating energy storage into energy markets and how that's going. Um, and, you know, one of the features we've done recently with Hawaii, uh, and actually a couple of weeks, is how changing what they call the utility regulatory model. Uh, and Hawaii is one of the leading 
um, what the referred to as performance-based regulation, where they're kind of divorcing uh, the idea that you get your return and your revenues based on your capital spending. Um, you know, utilities are impacted by this uh, transition. Um, and just in terms of our news coverage, we, you know, use can a combination I, of... I gotta, sure. I gotta talk over here and sure. be really rude. Believe it or not, we've blown through the first 15 minutes and we're ready for our break. So hold that thought, okay. we'll be back in one minute. Thanks. Aloha, I'm Wendy Lowe and I'm coming to you every other Tuesday at two o'clock live from Think Tech Hawaii. And on our show, we talk about taking your health back. And what does that mean? It means mind, body, and soul. Anything you can do that makes your body healthier and happier is what we're gonna be talking about. Whether it's spiritual health, mental health, fascia health, beautiful smile health, whatever it means, let's take healthy back. Aloha. Hi, I'm Rusty Komori, host of Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. My show is based on my book, also titled Beyond the Lines, and it's about creating a superior culture of excellence, leadership, and finding greatness. I interview guests who are successful in business, sports, and life, which is sure to inspire you in finding your greatness. Join me every Monday as we go Beyond the Lines at 11 a.m. Aloha. Okay, we're back after our longer break where we rectified some technical difficulties, which is always dangerous when you kind of play with the setup. But now we're back, we're live, we're hot again. We have Larry Pearl from all the way from Washington, DC, where all the fun is happening these last couple of days. And I have Peter Rozig with me from Hawaii Electric. Hawaii Electric just won Utility of the Year Award. So it's what a great, great uh, um, outcome. So Larry, I mean, uh, Peter, talk about this. Please. Well, before I, I brag humbly about the utility, uh, let me just follow up on what Larry was saying before. Uh, a very big part of what's going on kind of under the surface or invisible to most people, I think, is this performance-based regulation, performance-based rate making. Mm -hmm. And I want to say I give a lot of credit to the Public Utilities Commission right. here. Uh, we didn't initiate this. I mean, we've had elements of uh, performance based to where we would get uh, where we would be judged on how well we were doing on renewables, how well we were doing on customer service. We've always had an element of that. But the Public Utilities Commission uh, looked at this unique situation here and said, we really need to uh, bring this whole system into the present. And we're in discussions, negotiations with them and the consumer advocate. Uh, there are about 10 different areas, criteria that will establish a baseline, how many rooftop solar panels we have on the system, and then we'll be judged according to whether we grow them as we say we, we intend to. So it's really going to be another example, I think, and Larry can add to this, of, of, of the utilities going to be looking at this here and seeing how, how it works. Is any other utility doing this? Either you know, Larry, do you know if any other utilities uh, are going down this path? Or are we that unique? Are we like blazing the trail here for the, for, for the rest of the utilities in the U.S.? Well, I, I would say that Hawaii probably is in the lead in this, but there are a handful of other states that are moving in this direction. So it, it's something that a number of states are looking at, uh, but you know, Hawaii is going through a multi-phase process and they're in uh, phase two now, and uh, I believe the Utility Commission is, is expecting to um, or come out with a, a ruling uh, towards the end of, of 2020, um, but I would say Hawaii is definitely at the forefront uh, of this movement to basically change how utilities are evaluated and compensated and how they prioritize their projects and, and sort of the economics of, um, uh, of the industry. I have a question, Peter, sure. for both of you guys. It's like, how do you measure, I'll call it success or progress? Like you're doing all this work, but how do you actually measure? Is there a way to measure how well it's working? And well, how I do you do that? It's, it's tricky, and that's why it's a long uh, discussion with the commission. I think in some areas, as I said, if you there's some things that are fairly easy to quantify. Right. Uh, for example, we can say we can tell you uh, with a fair degree of precision how long it takes 
uh, when somebody calls our call center, how long it takes for them to get an answer. Right. We can put a number on how uh, quickly their issues are resolved or if right. how, how long somebody, you know, we answer, we say, please hold, how long that hold yeah. is. So some things like that are fairly, fairly easy. I mean, we have computers now that will tell you that, you know, spit out a report. So we can say, you know, get your calls down to two rings, get your holds down to uh, less than 10 seconds. Uh, you know, get people to, to resolve their issues in, in four minutes, right. whatever the numbers are. You get into other areas like rooftop solar and how much, how you integrate people into that. It's a lot more complicated. It depends not just on what we do, but what, what our customers do, what our, uh, what the contractors and solar right. developers do. Are they selling batteries uh, in a way that helps us get batteries in people's homes and on the system? So there's some things the utility can control, some things the utility can't control. And finding the, the, the sweet spot where you can actually measure or you know, be fairly accurate and find a way to, to determine that, in some areas, very hard. And that's exactly why we're going back and forth with the commission. And I think it's why people are watching us, because there are some things that are hard to measure. So what's your experience, Larry, with this uh, from you know the rest of the industry and all the feedback you get in from the you know, the rest of the utilities? Sure. I mean, I think as Peter um, was alluding to and saying that this is a complicated process. This is you know it, it, it's a long uh, you know stakeholder driven process uh, in, in you know Hawaii, Illinois, some other states where they are really taking a look at how you regulate utilities, how you assess utilities, how utilities make their investment decisions, um, how they're compensated for their investment decisions. Um, and it, it's, it, it's a very involved and, and complex process uh, that, that uh, states are going through. Um, and, you know, I, I think probably some states are, are watching, you know, these bellwether states like Hawaii to see how they are going through the process and, and what's working, what's not working, and how they come through the process. Uh, and you know, I expect that over time, more and more states will, because driven by the transition of the power sector uh, and the changes that that's going through, I think more and more states are going to get on this bandwagon of, of you know looking at performance-based regulation. Uh, but it's 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 a it's a long uh, process and. and like I said, I think a lot of states want different groups to be involved, whether it's utilities or environmental groups or public advocacy groups or, um, you know, or, 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 you know, state uh, legislators and so forth. Um, but it's definitely something that we have our eye on and are tracking. What about the uh, technical ability or, or uh, experience of the PUC commissioners throughout the nation, and also you brought up legislators. I mean, you know, everybody's not an electrical engineer. So how do you educate them and bring them along? And to, is this a, something your magazine tries to do? I mean, uh, to, you know, an educational part for the people that have to make these decisions or, or, or uh, generate these programs? How, how does that kind of work in the industry? Mm -hmm. Sure. I mean, we have a, a wide readership. Uh, you know, our, our, our target is utility professionals, but we have a lot of regulators and, and uh, um, you know, NGOs and, and other stakeholders that are, are readers. And you know, we certainly do have an education component to what we do. Um, you know, we try to, what we want to do is, there's, there's a lot of news happening, and we have limited resources. We have a very good team, but, you know, we have a limited number of reporters. and. Part of our function is to test through all of the things that are happening. There's announcements every day from you know, every state commission and, and you know, many utilities. Uh, and part of our job is saying to the readers, okay, these are the stories you should care about. And these are the top six, seven, eight, nine stories every day that we think rise to the level that you have a very busy day, but take 10 minutes and you'll be on top of what's happening in the industry. Um, and also, as I mentioned before, our, our deep dives or our features, they tend to be a little longer, but they really go in depth into sort of these issues like performance-based regulation, 
um, like distributed energy. We had a whole series on artificial intelligence in the power sector or how it's being applied to things like cyber security and improving customer engagement, things like that. So um, those are opportunities to look at things that are important to the sector and, and spend a little time and talk to some more people about what the challenges are and, and you know, where these things are going. Let me add, I'm a former journalist. I worked for the late lamented Honolulu advertiser for many years. I'm not an engineer by any stretch of the imagination. And I find utility dive, first of all, to be written uh, in an intelligent way, but not in a highly, highly technical way. So that it's, it's, it's a readily understandable, I think, to the average person who's willing to spend a little time with it. And also very important, most articles in utility dive start out with uh, a, a two or three or four bullet points to right. sort of say, here's our you know, short version, here's our take right. on the uh, situation, uh, boom, boom, boom. And then uh, you know, that will, if you don't care very much or you, that's all the time you've got, that will give you an, an entree into the right. subject. And if you have the time and or have the interest, you can read the rest of the article. So I think the way the di utility dive, and I assume the other dive publications, are set up is they're they're not for the uh, you know they're not for the Joe six pack as we used to say when we right. wrote the the Honolulu advertiser they're not for the guys who are you know in the sports section necessarily all their lives but they're for intelligent readers who are who know enough to know what they don't understand and they're very well written and and I, I give my kudos as a former journalist especially we've seen many many articles in Utility Dive as Larry said it's not always good stuff sometimes it's saying how we didn't make that particular yeah. thing or not, but it's fair, uh, it's straightforward, and it's readable. So I, I got to say, it's it's anybody that's interested, a, a legislator or a staffer, people on the commission, just people interested in the subject, ought to take a look. Yeah. All right. All right. Well, we've had some uh, new news out here in Hawaii today, and uh, I'm going to let uh, Peter introduce that to you. Well, the the news here is that we. After uh, five years of uh, very, I think, illustrious leadership by Alan Oshima uh, of our company through some, some rugged times, uh, he announced his retirement next year. And uh, his successor has been named is a guy named Scott Sue, who I think will be known to a lot of people because Scott is very involved in the community. He's been with the utility 27 years. He's worked in many different departments. Uh, he knows a lot of, about how the utility works. He knows the community. Born and raised here, he went to Kamehameha Schools. Uh, you know, he went off to some little college on the mainland. What was it called? Stanford. Oh, that little yeah. college. Yeah. Where, where is that? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> uh, he, got a, he got an MA or a BA and a, and a mechanical engineering degree at Stanford. Came back home and worked in a variety of, you know, he didn't have the honor. He didn't have the good fortune to have the University of Hawaii education. But, you know, nobody's perfect. <laughs> and, and, but he's really involved in the community. His family is very involved in the community, and he's very well known. He's led our efforts in resiliency. Uh, he's led our efforts in one company, which is trying to get the best of our three different companies, the best processes and procedures. Yeah. Uh, he's been in charge of public affairs for the last a few years, so he's my boss. So you can take that as a, right. you know, in terms of anything I say, <laughs> okay. you can take that into account. But um, you know, that combines regulatory and community relations and corporate communications. And, you know, our, our involvement with the community has really been, our community engagement has been under right. his supervision for the last four or five years. And that's been tough. It has been a tough, it has been tough, and it's not going to get a lot easier, <laughs> right? easier going yeah. forward. You know, there are yeah. people who are unhappy about a solar project in their neighborhood or a wind farm and so forth. Anyway, the company, people in the company are very excited about Scott. They're very, uh, you know, we heard a while ago internally, it's probably going to be somebody inside the company. And so there was a kind of horse race, right. you know, speculation about this candidate and that candidate. I think uh, this was a great choice by the board and it's going to be, uh, I think he's going to be a great leader going forward. And, and uh, he's going to, uh, have a, a, a raft load of challenges to meet. Sure so uh, he's got a, he's now, you know, he's not taken over the utility of the year. For yeah, the right. He's got to <laughs> carry that torch. <laughs> right. Keep he's got to, you know, we don't yeah. want to drop off the, we, he knows we can't drop off the, uh, off the marquee in yeah. the near future. So uh, we're very excited about it. We're very, we think it's a great, 
great move. And, and uh, you know, we're, we are, as I said, we're committed. We think we can get it to 50% renewable energy within a couple of years because of the big uh, procurement that Larry mentioned. We think we're going to triple the amount of rooftop solar. We're going to integrate our grid. We're going to harden wow. the grid against storms. Uh, yeah. Uh, you know, we're it's doing huge. a lot of stuff, and, and Scott has got to pick that baton up without missing a beat and continue running uh, as, as Alan has run the company. Well, he's so, got a great team supporting him, and I'd also like to make a plug that Scott is also a member of the uh, Hawaii Energy Policy absolutely. Forum. So one of our alum now, we really made it big time. So, Larry, believe it or not, we've blown through half an hour or more, and uh, I'm going to give you the last word. Uh, to wind us up. So um, what are your last words? Uh, just, well, thanks again for having me. And, you know, it, it's an exciting time for the power sector. And, you know, we we, we have a team that really is uh, excited about covering it. And we really look forward to all the things that Hawaiian Electric is going to do in the future. And, you know, there are a lot of challenges ahead and, you know, a lot of things happening. and you know, we're going to cover them as best we can, and we really look forward to, you know, continuing to, to work with them and to cover them and hope that we can sort of inform the sector and, and you know, let everyone know what's happening and, you know, why they should care about all these developments. Thanks, Larry. Okay. Right. Tell, tell, your boss, tell your boss you have to come out to Hawaii, you know, in That's January right. or February yeah. to take a look. Just, to, you know. I would love that. <laughs> So I'm getting the axe right now from the staff here. So I'd like to say thank you very much, Larry. Thank you, Peter. Absolutely. It's great. And uh, aloha, everyone. And we'll be back uh, next Wednesday at Hawaii, the state of clean energy. Aloha.